it is a little known fact that the first man-made object to reach space was a Nazi weapon. The Vergeltungswaffe II, or Vengeance Weapon II, was the brainchild of German-born engineer Werner von Braun, who later became instrumental in the US space program during the Cold War. Prisoners of war were forced to build the V-2 missiles under precarious conditions, and more people lost their lives during the manufacturing process than with the actual firing of the rocket towards the UK, France, and Belgium. However, in June of 1944, a V-2 missile launched from what was then Germany's Baltic coast reached a suborbital altitude of 108.5 miles. What constitutes international airspace boundaries is still debated to this day, but there's no question that many Nazi inventions had a significant influence in the space race, and even in modern outer space technology. A new weapon. Werner von Braun was born in 1912 and became fascinated with space travel from an early age. Von Braun studied physics and mathematics before being recruited by the German army after word of his ingenious university experiments got out. In 1931, a 20-year-old von Braun became the top civilian specialist at the Nazi's Kummersdorf rocket station in the south of Berlin. Four years later, the engineer and his group of scientists fired two liquid-fueled engine rockets using technology that later became the foundation of modern spaceflight. When World War II broke out in 1939, von Braun was pressured by the Third Reich to produce weapons with power unlike anything that had ever been seen before. With that in mind, von Braun came up with the plans for the A-4 missile. The Aggregat 4 was the world's first long-range guided ballistic missile and a more sophisticated weapon than anything built before. The rocket was 46 feet long, weighed 12.3 tons, and could carry a one-ton warhead. It was powered by a potent engine and a mix of liquid ethanol and oxygen capable of 25 tons of thrust. In addition, it could quickly reach supersonic speed and had a range of up to 195 miles. The A-4 had a state-of-the-art automatic guidance system that operated separately from ground controllers. Its destination was programmed into an analog computer, and once the rocket was launched, its gyroscopes could continually track its position in three dimensions. Meanwhile, a set of rudders fitted on its side would adjust the heading and trajectory to keep it on target in case of any course deviation. Despite its innovative nature, the A-4 was built in clandestine factories with slave workers. Many of the prisoners with technical skills were pulled from concentration camps and lived under precarious conditions with no sunlight, sleep, or food. The prisoners of war were forced to work around the clock at the Middleburg factory. The Birth of the Space Age during the testing phase in 1944, some of the A-4 rockets would explode into fragments at high altitudes. Werner von Braun and his colleagues then opted to use a mobile launcher and begin vertical test firing to better understand the problem. On June 20th, 1944, a Nazi A-4 rocket was launched from the device in the German-occupied Baltic coast and reached an altitude of 108.5 miles, making it the first man-made object to arguably reach space. German officials were shocked by the feat, and General Walter Domberger, director of the Vengeance Weapons Project, is said to have exclaimed, quote, Today, the space age is born. The groundbreaking achievement could have been used as a Nazi propaganda tool, as Germany was beginning to crack under Allied pressure. However, the Karman Line, an attempt to define the altitude where space begins as 62 miles above the ground, had not yet been declared by the Fédération Aeronautique Internationale, and thus the achievement that unofficially marked the beginning of the space age was largely forgotten. A last resort. The test trials caught Hitler's attention, and the Third Reich began to mass-produce the rockets at a feverish pace. The weapon then received a new name to use as Nazi propaganda, and it became known as the Vengeance Weapon II, or V2. It was promoted as a weapon intended as retribution for the Allied bombings in German cities. During the last stages of World War II, von Braun's missiles were launched at several targets, including London, Antwerp, and Paris. Although there are no official numbers, it is estimated that several thousand lives were claimed by the lethal missile in Britain alone. The entire V-2 program cost about 2 billion Reichsmarks, a similar figure to the amount spent by Allied forces on the atomic bomb. However, as impressive and modern as the weapons were, they could not win Germany the war, and the Third Reich finally surrendered on May 8, 1945. A Nazi spacecraft the Germans wanted even more potent versions of the V-2. Thus, von Braun and his team researched the possibility of derivatives such as the Aggregat 9 and 10, but they were both cancelled before ever being built. 
However, when some of the research drawings were discovered, one of the sketches showed a mysterious piloted aircraft derived from the Aggregat rocket with a pressurized cockpit and a tricycle undercarriage. The notes in the paper stated that the aircraft would be capable of a maximum speed of Mach 3.4 and an altitude of 65,000 feet, an astonishing feat for the 1940s. There is speculation that the real purpose of this vehicle could have been to serve as a suicide bomber, able to attack American landmarks, or even to be used for outer space missions. Had the plans not been scrapped, this crewed aircraft would have been able to cross the Atlantic in under an hour, or fly above the Kármán line, changing history forever. Another potential Nazi space project was the Silbervogel, a fully-fledged spacecraft designed by scientist Eugene Sanger. Sanger was another German Wunderkind scientist who had been researching supersonic flight and rocket engines before the war broke out, and continued his research after he surrendered to work with the French government. In the 1930s, Sanger sketched plans for a rocket-powered supersonic passenger aircraft. When he was hired by the Nazis, he remodeled the civilian vehicle into an extraordinary bomber. But the project was canceled in 1942, and the scientist was assigned other, more conventional tasks. Operation Paperclip When World War II ended, several nations realized that the V-2 was a war machine unlike any other existing weapon. Consequently, the Americans, British, and even the Soviets tried to get their hands on the technology. Between 1945 and 1959, Operation Paperclip brought more than 1,600 German engineers, scientists, and technicians to the United States for government employment. Werner von Braun and his V-2 rocket team were amongst those recruited. Von Braun, in particular, proved to be a valuable acquisition for the United States. Although the military's biggest priority was to develop intercontinental ballistic missiles, the German engineer finally had the opportunity to pursue his lifelong dream of spaceflight. In 1953, Von Braun and his team of scientists developed America's first ballistic missile, the Redstone, a rocket that could deliver its payload up to around 250 miles in range. The Redstone continued to be updated, and in 1958, a modified version of the missile renamed the Jupiter C was used to launch Explorer 1, the United States' first satellite. Von Braun eventually became the director of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, in which the Saturn V rocket was developed, along with other scientists such as Werner Damm and Conrad Donneberg. Saturn V was used to put America's first human into space in 1961, and later took the first astronauts to the moon. A Nazi Legacy Despite his complicity in the atrocities of the Middlewerk factory, Werner von Braun came to be known as the father of the space age. Other former Nazi scientists, like Eberhard Friedrich Michael Ries and Ernst Strullinger, helped develop the early stages of the Hubble telescope and pioneered space medicine. Additional breakthroughs achieved thanks to V-2 technology were the first ever outer space footage, fruit flies sent aboard a missile, and the first primate in space. And although not all the accomplishments of the United States space program were developed by former Nazi scientists, their efforts were instrumental in getting the program off the ground. Even today, the fundamental technology of launchers remains the same as it was seven decades ago. The engines work similarly, and rockets still use some sort of gyroscopic guidance, and most are powered by liquid fuel. All of these methods were pioneered by the V-2. According to space historian and London Science Museum curator Doug Millard, quote, Rockets haven't really changed a great deal. We're still living in the age of the V-2. Thank you for watching our Dark Space video. Don't forget to subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels, and let us know in the comments below about other space topics of your interest.